Happy holidays and seasons. Greetings. My name is Ben and welcome back to the Bench Guys for our very first episode of the fourth annual 12 Sprues of Kitmas Holiday Build Series. That's right, guys. We are back. I am ready to rock. As you can see, I've got my holiday red sweater here ready to go. I've got my cutting mat pulled out from storage, so we are going to go ahead and jump in. We're going to show you 13 model kits today, 12 of which will be built through the next couple of episodes. We're going to see what we can do and have some fun with it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you and unbox all the kits that we have as potential builds. And that's going to be in no particular order here, guys. So don't worry about that. We're just going to show you the kits, get started, have some fun. So first up here on the bench, we've got the F6F-3 Hellcat by Edward. This is a weekend edition kit. And I got to tell you, it looks like a pretty fun build. Last year... I built the Dash 5 version of the Hellcat by Academy, and I can't really say I loved the model too much. There were some issues with some parts, some things that just didn't look right to me. This, however, is an Edward kit, so I can already tell you that the fit's going to be better, the decals are going to be more accurate, the parts are going to just be better shaped. I'm really excited about this particular model. And also, we've got some really cool paint schemes. We've got, of course, the tricolored scheme. This one here has some white tail and a white spine, so that's awesome. I can't wait to dive in and check this one out. Hopefully, it gets into the rotation. Moving right along here, guys, we also have something super cool. This is the 172nd scale Airfix Bolton Paul Defiant Mark I. Now, I've always wanted to build a Defiant. I just have never had an opportunity. This, though, looks like a pretty fun little model. The inside is very typical in terms of Airfix. We've got a single bag filled with sprue. We've got our instructions. We've got a single sheet of decals. We also have a single sheet of stenciling instructions, which is really cool. We have two different color schemes. We have an all-black Night Fighter version. We also have the more typical daytime paint scheme of dark earth over dark green with that lovely sky undersurface color. So this looks to be a pretty fun little build. Can't wait to see what happens on the bench. Moving right along here, guys, we have another awesome model. We have the 172nd scale F4U Corsair by Academy. Now you're going to see a lot of Academy kits in this particular haul this year for 12 sprues. This one I've heard a little bit of mixed reviews on, but it looks cool. So let's go ahead and open it up and check the parts because you never know, especially with Academy. So opening it up, you are greeted with a very typical looking Academy boxing. We have a single poly bag with a couple of sprues, nothing too fancy there. Doesn't look bad, to be honest. Very nice recessed panel lines, great looking surface detail. So I'm fairly pleased with it. That's awesome. And plus, if it doesn't work out, we can always make it an ornament. So no big deal, really. It's a win-win for sure. Now, in terms of decals, guys, we have one decal sheet right here. And the cool thing is we have the red outline stars and bars. I've always wanted to build a model kit with those particular markings. Those were used for a very short amount of time, I think in like 1943. So that's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to that. And like I said, if this doesn't quite work out, we can always make it an ornament. So we're golden either way. Moving right along here, guys, we had to jump into this one. This is an F-104J or a CF-104 Starfighter by Hasegawa. This is one of those really cool looking Cold War aircraft. And you know my feelings on Cold War. I absolutely love those types of fighters. So this is going to be a fun little build. Plus, I've heard this kit rocks. Now opening it up, we are greeted with a poly bag with our decals for the Canadian version, the CF-104. We also have an entire sheet of Japanese markings. So you can see this is a very comprehensive decal sheet. We can probably build almost any aircraft from any of the units that actually operated the F-104. So that's pretty cool. I dig it for sure. Also, the plastic looks phenomenal. We have a lot of really fine recessed panel lines. We have some great looking detail for the cockpit. Definitely lives up to the hype for sure. Hopefully it pops up on the rotation, guys, and we can get a chance to take a crack at this because it looks awesome. Plus, we've got Canadian markings here, guys. I have never built a Canadian aircraft ever, so I have those at least for the spares. Carrying on here, guys, we have a World War I aircraft, one of the classics. We have a Fokker DR-1 triplane by Edward in 172nd scale. This is a weekend edition kit, guys, so it's not going to be too crazy. It should be a pretty simple build. Let's go ahead and open it up here and check out the internals. Now inside, we are greeted with one poly bag and one sprue. That's it. It's a very simple model, guys. I love these World War One aircraft. They just look so cool, and their paint jobs are phenomenal. So you can see here we've got our instructions, and we have our decals. We have two different schemes that we can paint. One is a really cool red and white and blue scheme right here. That looks awesome. And then this one is really impressive. It's got the streaked olive drab Fokker primer that is put on a lot of these triplanes. That's got to be great, but it's going to be super hard to paint that. So more than likely, I'm usually pressed for time for 12 sprues. So I'm more than likely going to go with the red and white version. But that's okay because that is also still an awesome looking color scheme. And either way, this is a win-win. I've heard that this is a little bit on the older side. These molds are starting to show their age. But I have a good feeling this is an Edward kit. So we're going to be able to pull it through for sure. 
Coming back up to World War II here, guys, this is the 172nd scale P47D. This is the bubble top version. And I got to tell you, I've always wanted to build one of these. And last year, I built the Razorback version. So this is going to be a really great little sister build to the one I did last time. We're going to go ahead and just open it up and check out the parts. If I remember right, it had mostly decent detail, at least on the Razorback version. So opening it up, we've got one poly bag with quite a few parts and pieces. That's awesome. Again, I don't really have any trouble with Academy in terms of their details or their fit. It. Usually they work okay. The decals are what's really, really troublesome. The one issue, of course, is always going to be the decals with these guys. There are some very intricate detailings here that I don't really want to have to fool with in terms of putting on decals. So I might have to go ahead and come back and paint some of these markings. I have no idea how that's going to go, though. So we'll just put it aside for right now. That'll be future Ben's problem. I'm not setting the lineup. That's my girlfriend doing that. So you never know. I might not even get to this version. Moving right along, guys, another World War II classic. This is a P-40E, also, of course, by Academy, 172nd scale. I love the P-40. I think it's a great looking aircraft and I am really excited about going ahead and building the E version and they have got some really cool markings in this for sure. Plastic looks great. We have a full set of decals of course and sometimes over accentuated raised detailing but also recessed panel lines so I think it's still going to work. It looks like a nice little kit. In terms of decals, we are given both the Southeast Asia RAF markings as well as the American markings. And it looks like you can build either one. We have a separate sheet here to show the Southeast Asia markings. That's cool. No problem with that. Though I more than likely will be building the American version just because I like that leopard head on the very front of this one. That's the Aleutian Islands P40. That's the one I'm probably going to be working on. So nothing really more to say about this one. So we'll see what happens when we get into it. But this looks like a pretty nice little build. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint. So yeah, let's move on. Moving right along, guys, this is another Academy kit. This is the 172nd scale TBF Avenger. Now, this kit I've heard is not great, and I'm not really sure how it's going to go, but I'm still going to try it. I'm still going to build it. I'm still going to have fun with it. So let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. Now, most of the parts and pieces look pretty decent, but I can already tell you there's no detail for that cockpit. It does have recessed panel lines. They're a little bit thick, but it does come with a stand. So this is probably going to be very similar to the Wildcat that I built from the same company either last year or the year before that. The clear parts are not great. They have very weak framing. That's going to be really hard to go ahead and mask. I might just end up just blacking out the canopy and just making it a desk model and just sticking up on my windowsill there at work along with my Wildcat. Probably the better course of action. It's a cheap model, but it should build up nicely into a real quick build and I can throw it on my desk and be done with it. Now, moving on, we have another questionable Academy kit. This is the MiG-27 Flogger. This is the ground attack version. And I'm not so sure about this one either. I've heard that it's kind of lacking on details. It's not necessarily very accurate. Some of the weapon loadouts aren't great either. So I don't know how it's going to go. But I've always loved the look of the Flogger. It's got that really unique, very Russian appearance. It's got the swing wing on it. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and build it. And if it's not that great of a kit, I can make it into an ornament and throw it on my tree. It's going to look fine. I'm not too worried about it. Going back over to World War II, guys, this is a 172nd scale Messerschmitt BF 109E4 by Airfix. Last year, I built the Airfix version of the early Mark Hurricane, and that was a fantastic build. So this, I'm going to go ahead and build up for the display case and drop it right next to that Hurricane. I'm excited about this one. Plastic looks great. Finally recessed panel lines. It looks like it's got a fair amount of detail there for the cockpit. We are only given one scheme though. So if you don't like this scheme, you probably should look for an alternate marking. I'm excited to go ahead and see how it looks. Plus, it's got those really cool yellow wingtips and yellow rear tail. That's going to make it super striking. So yeah, I'm excited, guys. It's got that really cool hash marking camo on the side of it. It's going to be a hoot to build. So let's hope that gets rolled into the queue as well. Now, keeping with that World War II vibe, this is another 172nd scale P-51D. This is going to go really, really well, I'm hoping, with the early P-51C that I built, I think, last year or the year before that. So that's going to be really exciting. The plastic doesn't look too bad. I don't know. I've never built this kit before, but it looks okay. We've got some nice detail in the cockpit there. Kind of overemphasized markings there for the instrument panel, but that's okay. We've got one sheet of decals, so we only have one marking scheme that we can do. And that, I'm not so sure, is going to be too easy to paint. This is a natural metal aircraft, so that's going to be a little bit more tricky. I have no idea how the fit's going to be. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. If we get it, we're going to do our best, see what we can pull off. Of course, we have another Academy kit coming at you. This is a 172nd scale A6M5C0. 
Now, I like the Late War Zeros. They're just something about them. They just look cool. So this is going to be an interesting build. Now, again, this Academy, and I have no idea how it's going to go together. There's no stand in here, so I'm assuming it's not one of those early kits that just absolutely suck in terms of fit. I'm hoping this is going to be a little bit better, but if it doesn't have good details or if it's just not right, I could just black out the canopy and I can make it an ornament because I've got a KF-44 that's screaming for a wingman. So this actually might really, really work well for my tree. You never know. Detail looks good though. I don't have any problem with it. Finally recessed panel lines. It's got some detail in the cockpit. So I think we're already ahead of the game. We're going to see how it works out. If it shows up on the bench, we'll see what we can do. And lastly, guys, we had to go with one of my favorite Cold War aircraft, the F-9F Panther. This is the Dash 2 version. It's a Hasegawa kit, and I've heard this is a great model, and I'm really excited to see if this makes it onto the queue. The plastic itself looks beautiful. We have finely recessed panel lines. We've got some really nice detail. At least it looks like that here from the poly bags. We have a couple of sprues, so nothing too fancy. We have some weapons. We have some options here, so that's awesome. Our decals, we have two different versions we can paint. One looks to be the gray over white, and the other is the dark sea blue. So we have two very different types of paint jobs we can do with this. One is very striking with the red lines. The other one is very typical for Korean War. I don't know what to do here. We've got some options. We've got a pilot. We've got some details. We've got some weapons. So we've got a lot of really cool ideas with this kit. I don't know how it's going to go, but I love the Panther, so I'm excited to give it a shot see what we can do if it shows up here on the bench. But that is it, guys. I am super excited to go ahead and jump in on this one. As you guys know, next I'm going to give all these labels over to my girlfriend who's going to place them in a random order inside a covered drawing box. And then every day I punch on through one of those openings, I pull out whatever kit's in there, I check it out, and I start building. My hope is to go ahead and release the first build day for you here in December on Friday the 2nd. And then I'm going to follow up with Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all through the month of December. So that's going to be the big focus. I'm going to put my other builds on hold for right now. We're going to focus just on the 12 sprues because it's a lot of work, and I'm really excited to go ahead and see if I can't make that cutoff by the end of the month. Now, full disclosure, I'm actually making this video the week of Thanksgiving. So we're going to jump in a week early, but trust me, I'm going to need it. And we're going to go ahead and get this started. See you back here on build day number one for the fourth annual 12 Spruce of Kitmas. Hope you guys have a safe and wonderful holiday season. And until our next episode, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you back here on the next episode of the 12 Spruce of Kitmas here on Ben Builds. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care and we'll see you soon.